Welcome to the lecture series on real analysis. In this lecture, we are going to see some counter examples. Okay. Before getting into this lecture, let me uh, register a few things from the previous lectures. In the previous lectures, what we have seen? We have seen the arbitrary union of open sets is going to be what? Arbitrary intersection of closed sets is going to be what? Okay. All those stuff we have seen. And not only in that lecture, even in the previous lectures, we have seen uh, some relation between open sets and closed sets, a set and its complement in all those stuff. Okay. If we are considering a set means, it is considered in the metric space X. Okay. So, if this is to be called as a metric space, this set is equipped with some metric D. Under this metric only we are talking. Okay, so under this metric, what we are talking? Suppose we are going to call this as an open set. What should we say? We have to say all the points in the set are interior points. Right? Suppose if we are going to say this as a closed set, every limit point of the set of the set is a point. Okay, so what do we mean by limit point? In the neighbor, suppose P is to be called as a limit point, the neighborhood of this P, in all the neighborhood of this P, we have, okay, we have some element of E. So this was the case, right? So when an event, in order to prove it is an interior point, we say what? There exists a neighborhood of X which is completely contained in E. So, here also we are talking about neighborhood, here also we are talking about neighborhood. What do we mean by a neighborhood? Neighborhood of any point with radius R is the collection of points in the metric space such that the distance is less than R. So, in, the, in those theorems, we have not specified this E is considered to be a metric, E is considered to be a subset of a metric space X but it is to be understood. So whenever we are talking about a set, it is taken from some metric space. That metric space is equipped with some metric. So only based on this metric, we are talking all these things. We are not talking, suppose D is the metric defined on it means we will have to talk these things based on D only, not based on D1. Okay. So here, in this lecture, we are going to say arbitrary intersection of open sets need not be open. If this is the case, if we are going to, okay, suppose we are going to prove something in general means we will take an abstract set, abstract metric space, abstract set, abstract point, limit point, all these things we will talk in abstract things. Here, it is given that need not be, which means it is true in some cases, it is not true in some cases. When we are trying to say something is not true, we will have to go with specific examples. Okay. So, in order to say something is not true in general, we give some example to prove it. Such types of examples are called as counter examples. Okay. Now let us get into this problem. I will, here I have to collect an arbitrary collection of open sets and finally I have to prove this is not open. Okay. The intersection of those collection is not open. This is what we have to prove. Okay. Here, in the previous lecture, we have proved if this is a finite intersection, that is open. We have proved it. So, we will have to say the infinite case. Okay. Now, let me consider, let uh, minus 1 upon n comma 1 upon n be the collection of open sets in R with d of x comma y is defined to be 
absolute of x comma y. Okay, in this metric, in this set, I am collecting. This is my collection of open sets. If you vary n, you are going to get infinite number of sets of this sort. Okay, now let me make the intersection from n runs from one to infinity minus one upon n, comma one upon n. What am I going to get? Let us examine with the help of a real number. We will start with one, right? So when I give, suppose this is zero. When I give one, I have minus one and I have plus one. This is my open set. Okay. When I give two, what I am going to get? I am going to get minus half plus half. This is going to be my n. So when I give n as three, I will have something like this. So minus one upon three, one upon three. When I give four, I will have interval of this sort. When I give five, it is coming like this. Okay. When I give six, it is coming like this. So as n becoming larger and larger values, what is it going to be? In the intersection, I am going to have only the point zero. Okay. What about this? This is. What about the singleton zero in R? This is a finite set, right? A finite set under this metric are considered to be closed sets because it does not have any limit point. Since it does not have any limit point, we don't need to bother whether the limit point is present in the set R or not. So it is. Closed. So what we got? We got the infinite, that is arbitrary intersection of this open sets is closed. So this proves this problem. Suppose if you take instead of this, if you take minus n comma n, and if you try to find the intersection, you will have minus one comma one. Because okay, minus one, one, okay, minus two, two. You will go this way. So when you make the intersection, you are going to get this part. This part is open. Here we are not saying that this intersection will always be closed. We are saying that it need not be open, which means it may be open in some cases. It may not be open in some cases. So. In these things, we will have to say when it is not true. That is, the inter intersection of open sets is going to be closed in what condition? In what kind of example? That is what we need to give. Okay. Now let us get into the next thing. That is arbitrary union of closed sets. For that also, we are going to take some example in this R only. Can you think of an example? Okay, here let me collect. Elements of this form. This is the collection of closed sets in R. Okay, with B defined in this form. We know that every singleton is a closed set. Now, when we make the union of This thing. What am I going to get? I will get, and this goes this way. Okay. What is the limit? Suppose let me take this set to be E. What is? Okay. Uh, we don't know whether we will have only one limit point or not. So let me write. What are the limits of? E. 
this we have seen in one of the previous examples the limits of e are only this thing but the zero is not a member of this e okay this is not similar to zero it is simply zero okay this is not a member of e which means e is not closed still now we have not said whether this is open or not we are saying this this is not closed that's it okay so we made a union of closed sets and finally we proved it is not closed so from the statement you will have to understand one more thing that is arbitrary union of closed sets need not be closed need not be closed means uh, we cannot come to the conclusion that we whether it is landing in either closed or open sometimes it may not be both that is it may not be open it may not be closed as well this will not this need not be closed that is given in the statement okay so uh, from these two examples you might have uh, come to some understanding of the union and intersection of closed and open sets If you have any queries you can post it in the comment section thank you for watching this lecture